Hi, this is Paul Opitz, Senior Product Manager for Radio Products at Unicorn Corporation. Back again to show you some of the new Home Patrol 1 Extreme features. In this segment, I want to look at the Trunk System Analyzer. Give you an idea of what it does, what it looks like on the Home Patrol, as well as what it looks like when you bring an activity log into Sentinel software. Let's go look now. Okay, here we are at our Home Patrol, and since this is the first time we've used any of the Extreme features, the first thing we need to do is enable those features by entering the registration key. So I'm going to go to Menu, Advanced Menu, Advanced Option, Register Advanced, and then input that very long key that I was provided, including the hyphens. Okay, well we've got that all entered. We'll hit accept. It will compare to make sure that that key matches the electronic serial number of my unit. That's why I wasn't afraid for you to see what I was typing in there. This key will only work on this specific home patrol. Once the processing is completed, we'll get back to the menu. And here we have advanced options. Register advanced is now grayed out because we've already registered and we have our three options for editing favorites lists, analyzing systems, and the discovery mode. Now this session is about analyzing systems. So we'll pick analyzing systems and the trunked system analyzer is what we're looking for. Select system. We're going to use the Grand Prairie system since it's right next door. I just need to put in the first few letters. Yes, this is the one. You pick which site to use for analysis. Grand Prairie happens to be a single site system, but some systems have multiple sites. You would see all the uh, repeater sites listed. You would pick the site that you wanted to use for the analysis. And that we have our analysis tools. The first tool we're going to look at is the System Load Reception Status Tool. It's a pretty simple graphic indication of our radio signal strength in the first column. As you can see, it's fluctuating a little bit here. Quality, that's the decode quality of the control channel. It's a little less than 100%, but that's, that's pretty normal, that's, and that's perfectly acceptable. And then the activity bar indicates what percentage of channels are active at any particular time. And as you can see as people are keying up their radios, talking, and then releasing the channel, that goes up and down quite a bit. Now let's look at current activity. On the current activity screen, you're going to see each of the channels on the system as they become active with voice traffic and we'll show you what talk group ID is active on that, chan on that frequency and also the unit ID that is operating on that frequency. Once a row is populated, it won't go away, but a row is not going to get populated until there is activity on the channel. If you look, uh, our row 2, which is LCN 398, which corresponds to a frequency of 860.9625, that's our control channel. It's shown in light blue. You can also see on that line that we're monitoring site 1 on the system and this system has a system ID of 2515 hexadecimal. On a mixed mode system, this is a, uh, a Motorola mixed mode system, the mode column will also show A for analog, D for digital, and E for encrypted channels. Now there's some additional color coding that would be used for uh, patch groups. Uh, check, check out the owner's manual for some more specific details on that. It's a pretty quiet system today. Only five of the frequencies have been 
active in the few minutes that we've been monitoring. Well, we'll move on and we'll look at the LCN monitor. Now this is going to appear somewhat similar to the previous screen. It's going to populate the channels as they become active on the system. However, the chart across is in times. What this does is it plots the activity on that channel over the last two minutes. So any channel that is active, you see a little uh, light blue bar as that channel is becoming active and then is released for other, cha uh, for other users to use. Notice that solid bar at the top is our LCN 398 again. The control channel, of course, is always going to be active. Again, it's a pretty slow system today, so we're not getting a lot of uh, eye candy out of this, but uh, I think this is enough to give you an idea of, of how the, this particular feature works and what it will look like. So let's move on. The next feature we're going to look at is the activity log. Now this is a little bit more detailed description of the activity that is occurring on the system this is showing, uh, on this screen we really narrow the scope to uh, channel grants and that is when a user uh, requests a channel and is granted a channel on the system as well as affiliations, that is when a user first turns on his radio and the radio is affiliated onto the system. Now while this is running, Home Patrol is capturing a very detailed log of every command that is being sent out on the control channel. You'll be able to use the Home Patrol Sentinel software to review these activity logs. You could also bring it into a spreadsheet like Excel or, uh, or Notepad or a text editor to do some other analysis. We'll look at that at the end of this session. Again, normally on a busy system this uh, screen would fill up pretty quickly. Now I'm just, so that I capture a pretty good size log, I'm just going to let this run for a little while and we'll come back to it later. Okay, this has been running long enough I think, so we'll end this. Okay, before we move over and uh, look at the activity logs in Sentinel, let me just show you one thing, the talk group converter. And since we're in a Motorola system, it's going to offer us the opportunity to convert between decimal and hexadecimal format. So we'll just uh, try one here. Decimal format uh, 2336. When I accept that, it'll show that the hexadecimal format for that, chan uh, for that talk group ID would be 92H. Similarly, if you're on an EDAC system, it would switch between AFS and decimal format. Okay, well, let's go look at uh, let's go look at that activity log in Sentinel. Okay, here we are back in our Sentinel software. If we select Tools, go to the Activity Log Viewer. Here we can look at collections that we've previously imported. Normally, we would select Import Activity Log with this icon. I've already imported the Grand Prairie log that we created earlier, so we'll go straight to Collection 4. Maximize this window, and we can look at that log. Now as you see, we have a column with the uh, date and time that the log entry was made. The second column is the detailed data that is being received on the control channel. 
And occasionally you'll see receive errors. That's normal. If you recall, we did not have 100% uh, signal copy on the control channel, but it was certainly adequate to trunk track that system. We caught a system ID beacon. We got a, caught a site ID beacon here. And as we scroll down through the log, we'll see the voice channel grants, uh, channel grant updates. Again, a repeat of the site and system ID. Not every line is populated. But if you wanted to do some external analysis on this data, we could simply select the table, copy it, Excel, and then paste the data. Put up and a if we format our columns a little bit, you see the same information that was being provided in the Sentinel viewer in Excel, you could then do statistical analysis of channel grant activities versus time. Uh, you know, I'll let your imagination just run away with you there. I would also imagine that some of the third-party authors that write trunking system analysis software will get involved in providing some tools for taking advantage of this data. Well, I hope you liked what you saw, and come back again soon for some of our other features.